Okay, today I'm going to talk about the relation between angular frequency, actual angular frequency, normalized frequency, and the DFT index. Uh, I'll establish the relation uh, between these uh, three uh, parameters. Okay, so first let's assume that I have a signal x of t and the corresponding Fourier transform is x of j omega. So I'm going to use capital omega for the uh, actual angular uh, frequency. As you know, x of j omega is equal to integral from minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the minus j omega t dt. Okay, and omega is 2 pi f, angular frequency. Uh, here, I'll assume that this x of j omega is something like this. Okay, it's a band-limited signal, minus omega c to plus omega c. In general, x of j omega is complex, but uh, I drew a real figure here. Uh, and it is a band-limited signal with cutoff frequency uh, omega c. Uh, I'm going to uh, sample this signal. with the sampling frequency omega s or equivalent sampling frequencies fs or equivalent sampling period is ts and we get a discrete time signal xn xn is x of n ts and n goes from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so uh, x of uh, n has a discrete time Fourier transform x of e to the j omega summation n from minus infinity to plus infinity xn e to the minus j omega n. And let's assume that uh, my uh, sampling frequency is uh, greater than 2 omega c, but for the time being I'll just uh, make it equal to 2 omega c. Okay, uh, in this case, x of e to the j omega x of e to the j omega uh, will have the same shape as x of j omega. Okay, this little omega is the normalized uh, frequency, 0, 2 pi, pi, minus pi. If this amplitude value is 1 here, this is 1 over Ts, and this is my normalized frequency axis, omega. Okay, so let me put everything into the viewing range of the camera. So this is x of e to the j omega plot. Okay, so the shape of the spectrum is the same as the shape of that. And capital omega c corresponds to pi here because my sampling frequency is 2 omega c. In discrete time domain, uh, the highest uh, frequency that we can capture 
is determined by my sampling frequency omega s and it is equal to 2 omega c and therefore my highest frequency is pi which corresponds to omega c okay so next i'm going to discover not discover um, uh, use dct uh, sorry D discrete fourier transform okay this is dtft now i have the dft 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 xk is defined as summation n from 0 to n minus 1 xn e to the minus j 2 pi k n divided by capital n okay and we uh, calculate xk this is a discrete transform for k is equal to 0 1 all the way up to n minus 1 now uh, clearly dtft is an infinite sum this is a finite sum uh, therefore i cannot perfectly represent uh, the above uh, dtft however if most of the signal energy is in between 0 and n minus 1 then dft approximates uh, dtft okay dft approximates uh, dtft uh, and compare the DTFT and DFT and you will see that uh, we sample uh, DTFT okay so XK is approximately equal to with uh, X of E to the J Omega evaluated at Omega evaluated at 2 pi k over n of course this approximation this approximation is based on the fact that most of the signal energy lies in the analysis window okay so in this case i uh, uh, by sampling the dtft I uh, sample the range of angular normalized angular frequencies from 0 to 2 pi so this is my k but I go I start from 0 and go up to n minus 1 and this is my n so we get uh, samples something like this okay at n over 2 I have zero just like here and they go like this okay i have a, sorry approximately they are uh, i mean the shape of this uh, hopefully it looks like uh, the shape of the spectrum here or this uh, spectrum up there and uh, The relation is um, uh, an approximate relation uh, because I have a finite sum instead of an infinite uh, sum here. Okay, so this ends the review or the summary of the relation between actual frequency, normalized frequency, and the corresponding DFT index K. So n over 2 corresponds to pi. Okay, n over 2 corresponds to pi. This is normalized frequency. Normalized frequency, angular frequency actually. Okay, 0 corresponds to 0. And in terms of actual angular frequency, uh, 0 corresponds to 0 and pi corresponds to omega c actual frequency okay so i will just slide this a little bit up so 
0 to n over 2 corresponds to 0 to pi. Uh, then, in terms of normalized angular frequency and in terms of actual frequency, pi corresponds to omega c. Um, if xn is a real signal, we have the conjugate symmetry property. Therefore, the magnitudes of uh, the samples from n over 2 to n minus 1 are the same as uh, the, or they the same as the magnitudes from 0 to n over 2 uh, the uh, phases are different uh, they are the conjugate symmetric versions of the uh, frequency samples from 0 to n over 2 um, so this is it